Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today we're gonna to talk about Chainlink, and we're just gonna be continuing to follow its move. So if you guys like the channel, uh, you guys like the content, please go ahead and subscribe. Uh, and also check out the Telegram channel here in the description below and the premium list if you want access to exclusive content. So let's go ahead and jump in. So we have our Link Bitcoin valuation. We've been watching this for a long time, and especially breaking it down by whether Bitcoin is above the 20 week or below the 20 week. and you know, when, when Bitcoin's above it, you tend to see these several X increases in the short term. Uh, when Bitcoin's below it, it, it doesn't necessarily have, uh, you know, any unique pattern. You know, we have, we went down and then up, and then here we came up and back down. So there really isn't a pattern when Bitcoin's below the 20 week, which is actually remarkable because when Bitcoin's below the 20 week, most other coins tend to perform very poorly, whereas Chainlink has outperformed Bitcoin for the duration of the market, uh, of the bear market. So. Uh, where are we today? So we've talked about, you know, we've talked about, uh, well, first let's, let's talk about price. Well, I guess I'll, we'll go to the, um, to the Bitcoin valuation first. So we're in this general trend line here. We've, we've, I have not touched it. You can even see that uh, we actually dipped slightly below it. Um, but in the long term, you know, this, this trend line, I think, has, has been a pretty good indicator as to where we are in the, in, in the grand scheme of things, you know, coming down near the bottom of it several times and then coming to the top of it several times as well. Now, one of the things we've noted is we also have this longer term trend line with respect to Bitcoin. Um, and I think it's interesting because, you know, during a bull market, it, it, you know, Link hasn't really lived throughout the duration of an entire bull market, right? I mean, it's it's performed really well during the bear market. It's already above its, its 2017 highs, but in terms of actually experiencing a full bar, a full bull, bull market, we don't actually know what that looks like with Link yet. Um, there, you know, there is this trend line here, which seems to be that it is converging. I mean, Chainlink outperformed Bitcoin during the bear market. The question is, can it outperform it during the bull market? And if so, by how much? We do know that a lot of coins do tend to outperform Bitcoin at key stages of the market cycle. So we're, we're certainly going to be watching this trend line here. If you, if you go back, we're going to get into some new content, by the way, in case you've seen these videos before. Um, we also have our logarithmic regression of link prices. I'm just going to give you guys an update here. We have our yellow line, which are which is our fair value fit. So it's identifying overvaluation versus undervaluation. You can see that by the long term trend line, link is by this definition overvalued. Um, but again, if you had done the same same thing for Ethereum back in 2016, it also would have told you it was overvalued, but it just kept on going up in the um, over the next two years. So in the short term. Uh, we have our, you know, we're still between our yellow band and our red band, which is where we've been for the last several months. Uh, if you, if we were to come up to the, to the red band here, which is where we found resistance at last time and where we came back down to our fair valuation line, this would correspond to around, you know, $8 or so. So I would say at least keep a, at least keep an eye out on that point. And then also for those who follow the channel, we do like to talk about lengthening cycle theory. And I do think that we're gonna come back up to the top part of the band. At least I think there's a good chance we'll come up to the top part of the band at some point. Um, but I think there's a good chance it'll happen in say, uh, you know, 2023 or so. And that would maybe get us to $100 uh, per, per link. Um, now, before I get into the sharp ratio, here, here's also just the price, of Bit, uh, the price of link with respect to Bitcoin when it's below the 20 week end, or it's the price of link with respect to fiat, but it's based on whether Bitcoin is above or below the 20 week moving average. Here you can see a clearer pattern. When Bitcoin's above it, link tends to do really well. When Bitcoin's below it, link doesn't really do a whole lot. Um, you can see here we went from like 15 cents up to over a dollar. Here we went from 50 cents up to you know three dollars. This was a nice move as well. And then maybe we're still in the beginning stages of this one. You can see we're still kind of slowly building our way up. And now we've started to, to really move upwards today. So let's go back. I want to talk about the sharp ratio. So we're, we're basically bringing in some level of, uh, you know, traditional finance into, you know, modern portfolio theory into cryptocurrency. And we made a video about this the other day. I would encourage you to go check it out. It doesn't talk about link in that video. We're going to talk about link in this video and the sharp ratio. But if you want to learn more about the sharp ratio, then go check that out. It basically is a way for you to measure your risk adjusted returns. So instead of just blindly throwing money into different assets because you think they're going to outperform, you know, Bitcoin or another coin, you can actually 
try to identify, you know, given your expected return and a, and a certain volatility associated with that, where would that where would that put the asset? And then there's a way you can you can maximize that given your portfolio. So this was the Sharpe ratio for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the S&P 500. And note this is including all historical data up until this point and this point for the S&P. The reason I didn't go further back for the S&P 500 is because I thought it would be unfair to send its data through the you know through the 2008 um, uh, financial crisis. But since Bitcoin wasn't around then, it wouldn't be skewed by that data. So we're just starting it in 2011 when we have um, uh, have that data available. So for Bit for Bitcoin and then Ethereum, of course, should starts when we have data for Ethereum. And this is a running Sharpe ratio. So it includes all prior data up to each point that you see, and it's granulated monthly. So for Bitcoin, you can see that it's currently down to around a ratio, a sharp ratio of three and a half. Ethereum is also approximately at three and a half. In the last video, I, I actually extended it out a month, which showed the Ethereum ratio going below the Bitcoin ratio. But I've, I've decided to hold off on that projection until we actually get the, the actual data for it. So at present time, you know, the Sharpe ratio of Bitcoin and Ethereum are pretty similar, including all historical data. Statistically speaking, a Sharpe ratio of three or more is considered excellent. And Bitcoin's is three and a half. And the S&P 500s, you can see, normally hovers around a Sharpe ratio of one. But what if, instead of taking all historical data, it's somewhat unfair because you're, you're valuing you know, people care about what's going on today, right? You know, if you're, if you're buying Link today, I mean, this is not financial advice, but if you're buying Link today or Bitcoin or Ethereum today, you don't really necessarily care so much about what Bitcoin was doing 10 years ago. And you wouldn't want that data from what it was doing back then to skew the ratio that it is today. So this chart shows the Sharpe ratio over a 12 month running window. So it only includes each point you see includes the last 12 months. Okay, it doesn't, it's not forward looking at all. It's just each point, it includes the last 12 months, which is why it starts in 2011, as opposed to 2010, because it takes 12 months of data, of Bitcoin data to have a sharp ratio to begin with. So you can see the sharp ratio of Bitcoin, you know, it, it's it spiked up during that, during the bull, bull run of 2013, it spiked up during the bull run of, of 2017, this one note was not nearly as high as this one. One of the things we've talked about, or we, we will do in future videos, is there's also another ratio we can use called the Sortino ratio. And in this one, it's slightly different. In this one, it does not punish positive volatility. So the Sharpe ratio punishes um, uh, volatility to the upside. And, and, it, and, and, and basically by doing so, it, it makes it so that the ratio might actually be lower than what you, would, what you might think it would be, given, given the historical data. The Sortino ratio compensates for this by only punishing negative volatility. So identifying for, say, every unit of bad risk that you take on. Not good, you know, not positive volatility, but bad risk. So we'll look at that in a future video. Here, we're just gonna show the sharp ratio. We're gonna go through it, you know, methodically throughout, throughout say, like a video series. Um, but we have on here the link sharp ratio over the last 12 months. You can see the moving window. And even th as we've said, it's outperformed. It's been a better performer than Bitcoin and Ethereum did during the bear market. The sharp ratio also encapsulates that, you know, including the, the volatility to the downside and the upside. The sharp ratio for link is, is significantly higher than Bitcoin and Ethereum. Presently, it is, you know, at a sharp ratio of, of over six. And Bitcoin and Ethereum are, are just slightly over zero. So Bitcoin and Ethereum, in terms of their risk adjusted returns based on the 12 month moving, moving window right now, are not, are not, uh, they're not necessarily a great um, uh, say an investment in terms of say looking at a 12 month window. But that's because, that's because you know, there was a pretty big move to the downside. Um, you know, in the last year, and we've seen that time and time again. You saw it. We also saw it. It saw it in March as well. So you have to take that into account when when looking at the sharp ratio, the downside volatility. All that volatility increases the risk associated with your investment, and therefore your risk-adjusted returns are encapsulated by the sharp ratio. With all that said, the link sharp ratio is significantly above Bitcoin and Ethereum, which means it is, in terms of the level of risk that you're taking on, your expected reward. You know, your return has been a lot higher for that level of risk that you've taken on. So this is something we're going to continue to closely follow during the second year of the YouTube channel. 
So be sure to be sure to continue to tune in for that. Subscribe if you if you want to see that. Um, in doing so, over the next year, we're going to be developing as we walk through these various ratios and how we can optimize them for various weights. There's something called the efficient frontier, which is the expected return versus the variance. Given a certain level of risk that you want to take on and a certain you know portfolio, uh, whatever coins you may have in your portfolio. So given a level of risk and we with our expected return, there is a weighting that would be optimal. So we're going to be going through this, uh, you know, through the video in, in this video series over the next year. We're going to go through it, you know, s systematically. So if you're interested in this, and of course we're going to include link. If you're interested in this, please subscribe to the channel so you can so you don't want to miss that. Um, I also would like to pull up just the general the general price chart. So we've spoken, you know, here's the link Bitcoin ratio. We already drew the longer term trend line. You can also draw, I mean, I'm not huge on trend lines, but you can also draw just the shorter term and see that that's kind of where we went up to in the short term. Um, and we have this, you know, this kind of pattern right here. Um, so this ratio is, is around point, uh, you know, you can see it's uh, 0 0.00049. So close to point, point 0 0.0005, 0 0.0005. Um, so of course, keep an eye out on this. Obviously, we're in it for the long haul. I, I do think that, that Link has a good three years ahead of it in, in terms of, say, Bitcoin getting into a bull market and, and going, you know, staying the course and following the regression line over the next three years. I think Link will be, um, you know, a winner rather than one that's going to continue to lose, say, lose value against Bitcoin. It's so far, it's only shown to continue to do well. And if you look at a lot of indicators, you know, a lot of people throw a lot of different indicators at you. And a lot of times they just don't work out, you know, and, and then they just move on to a new indicator or they redraw it sometime later. One of the things that that is true, statistically speaking, is that assets that are doing well tend to continue to perform doing well over assets that are not doing well. And Link, as you can see, has been performing very well over the last, you know, couple years or so. So this is definitely, uh, you know, Link is definitely something that I hold. Um, and we'll continue to hold, you know, for the, for the duration of the, of the bull market. And of course, I'll be taking profits along the way. Um, we also have the, the link USD chart. Uh, I mean, just business as usual here too. I mean, we're, we're, we haven't quite broken our prior all time high. I mean, we're, we're, we've gotten really close to it, but you can see that the prior all time high is, is, is higher than, than where we currently are. So look to break that. If you can, if we can, if we manage to break that, then you know, we maybe we'll see a, a move up to, you know, maybe the $8 region, which is where our, our overvaluation regression line, which is still imaginary at the end of the day. Um, but maybe this is where, where it'll take us. So I hope you guys enjoyed the, 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 the content uh, today. If you guys uh, want to see more of it, please subscribe to the channel. Also check out the premium list. You can find that at intothecryptoverse.com if you want access to weekly reports, a weekly video, and a, you know, a Google Sheets, Sheets dashboard with live risk levels. So please check that out. Um, I would love to see you guys there. I'll, you know, I'll send you, an, you'll get an email uh, right after you join. Uh, that'll wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. See you next time.